I'm going to demonstrate making shapes look three-dimensional. We're going to start by drawing our basic geometric shapes and changing them into three-dimensional shapes by shading them and adding some volume. For this project, you'll need a pencil and an eraser. If you'd like to finish your design with colored pencil, you could choose to do that also. So I'm going to start with my basic geometric shapes, a circle, a triangle, a square, and a rectangle. The circle is going to stay pretty much the same until we do the shading. The triangle is going to stay the same on the outside edges, but the bottom of the triangle is going to curve down to make our triangle look more like a cone. Our rectangle is going to have the outside edges remain the same. The bottom is going to curve down. And the top is going to have a squished oval or any lips to show the top edge. So now we have a cylinder. And our square is going to have lines that come off of each of the three outside corners. And if we make those lines look as if they would meet far away in the distance, that will make our cube look like it's in perspective. Our back edge of our cube is parallel to the front edge and our side edge of our cube is parallel to the side edge. Now we're going to go ahead and shade. Again, you could choose to do yours in colored pencil or in regular pencil. The advantage to doing yours just with a regular drawing pencil is that you can erase areas a little bit easier if you put in too much shading and you can even use your finger to shade and blend things. Colored pencil is a little harder to erase. So I'm going to begin by putting in a shape that is similar to the shape that I've drawn on one edge of the shape. I'm gonna keep mine all on the left hand side these are going to be the highlights or the area where the light is shining on the object or reflecting. So I'm going to make mine all on the left edges. And the cube is a little bit more difficult. It has a little bit more shading. Now we're going to work with our colored pencil and work from the area that we left white where the highlight is making it get gradually darker as it goes off to the side. And on the right hand side, since it's furthest away from the light source, it's going to get very dark. And on the left hand side, just a little bit darker. I'm going to curve my lines a little bit on the bottom and the top edge. The top of my cylinder is going to be very dark in the back and getting lighter as it comes to that front edge. And again, if you think you have too much shading, you can take a little bit out or blend with your finger. I'm going to do my cone next. My cone is going to be similar to the cylinder. I'm going to work away from that highlight out to the side 
to get gradually darker. That outside edge is going to get much darker. That's furthest away from the light source. And I'm going to curve the bottom edge to echo the shape of my cone. The other side is going to get a little bit darker as it goes out to the outside edge. So it looks like it still goes away from us, but not quite as dark as the other side. Our circle to become a sphere is going to get darker as it goes to the bottom edge that's furthest away from the highlight. I'm going to make that edge pretty dark. And I'm going to use the edge of my pencil so that I could curve my lines a little bit. And I'm going to get lighter as I come towards my highlight. And now my cube. The front of the cube is going to still be fairly light. The bottom front edge is going to be a little darker than the top edge, as well as the side that's furthest away from the light source. I'm going to get lighter as it comes towards that highlight. The top edge is going to be dark in the back and getting lighter as it comes forward, leaving that top front edge and a little bit of the left corner a little lighter. And the back right corner of our cube is going to be the darkest. Very dark in the back, dark on the bottom and getting light as it comes towards the side. But still darker than the front and darker than the top. Now you could leave your shapes that way if you wanted to just have your 3D shapes and not do any shading, you could leave it alone. If you wanna add those shadows to your shapes, your shadows are going to be similar to the shape that you've drawn just getting a lot more elongated and the shadow kind of disappears and fades as it goes gradually away from the shape. So I'm going to add my shape for my shadow for my circle and my shape for my shadow for my cone and my cylinder and my cube. All right, now we're gonna work on the shadows. On the edge that's closest to the shape, you wanna be really dark. I'm gonna push that shadow so we see the shape separate from the shadow. And then we're going to extend the shadow out, pressing lighter as we go away. So it almost disappears into the white paper. On our sphere, we're going to be really dark underneath. Again, pushing that shadow. We're going to gradually get lighter as we go away. Our cylinder is going to have a very dark shadow again on the bottom edge. And it's going to get lighter as it goes away.
Sander cube. We only have to push that shadow on the bottom edge of the cube because that one side was so much darker to begin with. And we're going to gradually get a little lighter as we draw out to the side. So there we have our three-dimensional shapes. Once you can draw two-dimensional shapes into 3D shapes, you can give your drawings a lot more volume. I hope you enjoyed that.